Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to do this cow print nail. Just keep on watching. So I am actually going to start off by saying that two of my nails on my other hand, my right hand, have come off because I cannot do my nails with my non-dominant hand. And so I did not seal those correctly. That's what I said on my story. I, I started taking them off because they started lifting. That's what happens when you don't seal the cuticle area right. Back on this. So I'm just removing the shine off the natural nail. You want to make sure there's no shiny spots. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Like, I'm serious. Like, nothing. Nothing. Because if there is a shiny spot on your nail... The tip won't get on and your acrylic will just pop off. So that's one thing you definitely want to make sure of. And then next I am going to dust it off. You always want to dust off the nails. You don't want to apply a product on top of dust because that will cause lifting as well. There's so many things that cause lifting guys. So you want to be very careful. Now I'm taking a dot of my KDS glue. You can find this glue on Amazon. And I'm gently pressing on the nail tip. You want to make sure you don't slide the tip around because you're creating a new, you know, shiny spot. So with shiny spots, again, it will not adhere properly. So just keep it down. Hold it for 10 seconds. Once it's on, it's on. So you have to be very careful. And now here I'm going to cut the tip to the desired length. I use straight scissors to cut these. And then when I want to cut the sides for like a coffin, I'll take my curved scissors and gently use the very end of the scissors and start cutting up slowly. That's how I use my curved scissors. You have to be very careful with it. It's kind of tricky at first, but just keep practicing and you'll get it. Now I'm taking my file and you always want to keep your file straight. That's a big a big thing some girls ask me like hey why is it coming out like not so straight as yours? You have to keep your file straight right against the nail tip. That's the only way you're going to get it really sharp. And then also by the end of the tip, I do go up and down. It's a preference. You don't have to do it that way. You can do it side to side, but this is just how I make my nails a little bit more sharper. And I also flip the nail like that so I can check if it's crooked and I feel like it's fine. So I went back in, kept filing. You also don't want to overfile one side too much because then that's when it'll be crooked again. So counting your head like one, two, three, go to the other side, one, two, three. Now I'm blending the tip and this is just a preference too. You don't have to do this, but I don't know. It looks really fancy. I like it. Also, if you want to do a more narrow coffin shape, keep your file at a 45 degree angle, but still make it straight. Don't curve the, the file. And now after that, I'm ready for my application. I did dust off the nails. You always want to dust off the nails. Do not apply acrylic on top of dust. So now I'm working with the color white. And what's really funny is that the color white is very, very hard to work with. Any white you get, it's so like kind of like on the runny side. But that's just how it is. So I always grab a bead. I grab my bead at an angle. You want to make sure that your brush doesn't have too much liquid. Like you don't want it to be super runny. You want to have it at a good ratio. Also, you don't want to drag the brush into the acrylic. I just bounce it and it gets the perfect bead. And you place your bead down and you want to mold the bead. You don't want to apply too much pressure. You're just guiding the acrylic downwards. You also want to keep wiping your brush. As you can see here, I have the biggest habit of wiping my brush, but that's how I don't get any acrylic on there. And the way I do my 
application is I do two beads or maybe three depending on you know how long is the nail and stuff so this is what I do I always wipe off the sides so I get that nice shape also the tip I use my brush and I kind of like push up I'm a more visual learner I don't know how to explain some things but just watch in my videos and you'll get it now I'm taking my cuticle one and I always drain the liquid off my brush whenever I'm going in by the cuticle area so that it doesn't run and you also want to keep your client's finger downwards because gravity does the work for you it's going to bring down that acrylic so it doesn't flood into your cuticle area and now I'm swiping it I'm blending it in with the rest like so cleaning the sides and just blending it down and honestly this is the perfect opportunity y'all to practice on your application and your shaping and all that since we're in quarantine we're at home doing nothing you know so I'm also practicing as well I'm learning new things along the way and I want to thank y'all so much for teaching me as well like I'm not I feel like sometimes I'm not that great of a teacher because I am self-taught so there have been some things that I do know and then some things that I don't know so if you guys ask me a question that I never had a problem with myself I'm probably not going to be able to answer your question because this is just all through my experience I hope I make sense Now this is a very frequent question and it's how do I get rid of the monomer smell in my house? And this is what I do. Well this is first I'm cleaning my brush. I am grabbing like the leftover monomer and I'm just wiping my brush like that. Just like that. And then after I'm done cleaning my brush, that's when I roll up my towel, my blue paper towel, and I grab a little sandwich bag. Right? And you're going to see right now, yeah, see, I cleaned my little bowl because my bowl has that monomer smell. And then after I'm done with that, that's when I grab my little sandwich bag. I put the blue paper towel inside of the plastic bag. And then I tie it up and throw it away. That's what I do. And I also put my, I open my window. I put a fan blowing outside. Yes, not blowing in, blowing outside because it's gonna suck all that air out this is a thing that my dad taught me because my dad seriously hates the smell of monomer and this is just what i do i wrap it up throw it away and after every client i'll go outside and throw it in my big trash can and that's how i get rid of the smell i don't really smell monomer in my house that often like it's it's clean so now we're back in, we're reshaping, and I'm showing you guys a close-up on how it's supposed to look like when you're shaping, just like that. And I also get this question so much, is how do I not like burn my client with the file? And you want to take another file and you want to file these edges right there. And I think Noonie has a video on it, not sure, but I hope I can explain it. Just you have to dole out the edges because when you get a new file... It is extremely sharp. Like, I'm talking really, really sharp. So when you create, like, that friction, you're going to get the client's skin. And it's going to cut them. And they're going to be very scared of getting your nails. They're getting their nails done with you. So you want to make sure you always dull out those edges. And see how my application is not that perfect. So I go, go in damn it I can't talk today I go in with my file and I smooth it out and I think Natalie Carmona I'm so sorry if I mispronounce her name but she's on YouTube she is a great teacher y'all should go watch her but she also uh, says to grab your file 
And to get rid of those lumps, you have to go in a downwards direction with your hand file on top of the nail. I hope I make sense. Just keep on watching and you'll see. I hope y'all can understand what I'm saying, but this is what I do right here. And you're going to see in a few seconds that the lumps disappear and it's all smoothed out and even. And it's going to create a little bit of scratchiness on it. But that's when I go in with my e-file and it removes all those scratches. You also want to flip it like this and check it to see that it's even in that area. Just file to the sides like so and just keep checking. You always want to check all your nails like rotate it everything check it all of it now i'm taking my tapered barrel bit this is one of my favorites and i actually zoomed in for y'all so i can explain the whole sealing the cuticle area thing so I actually went on YouTube and I saw a video on Natalie Carmona, I think that's her name. If I mispronounce it, I'm really sorry. But she says 99% of lifting comes from not sealing the cuticle area. And this is what it is. I'm not using the very edge, that little sharp part. I'm just using the very top part of the bit. And just going around gently you don't want to apply pressure because then the product will come off and you also want to make sure that you have enough product by the cuticle area so that you don't over file it and remove the product now that i'm going downwards onto the nail i'm going in with like the belly of the bit just going side to side and i went back in to seal it better I did a little close-up so y'all can see what I'm talking about because I've been getting this question a lot too. Just going around, going side to side, and also on the bottom part, once you get to the bottom of the nail, the very end, the tip, that's when you use the very bottom of your bit. You're going to see in a little bit, I point out to it right here, right there on the bottom. And I always do it in one direction. So I don't lose control of the e-file because that usually happens to me sometimes if I don't go in just one direction. If that makes sense. Hopefully y'all can understand. And some of you may notice but I do go underneath with a bit. It's just to remove all like that crust on the bottom so the work underneath still looks really good. And you always want to check it just keep checking it making sure the sides are good i wanted to make it more straight so i went underneath right there that's like a little life hack i have to make it straighter Now that I'm done with that, I take in my buffer and I've noticed some of you girls ask me like, hey, my buffer is the one giving me scratches on the nail. Make sure that you kind of use up your buffer because if you use it like brand new, sometimes it is a little rough. So you kind of want to take off that first rough layer off by like cleaning it with your nail brush and it'll make him softer and you won't have any scratches on it. You also want to be very careful using the buffer because sometimes you can cut the client. And now I'm taking like this little kabuki brush. That's what I use to wipe off all the dust. And now I'm taking a very cheap uh, nail brush. And I'm taking the Young Nails little gel paint in, I think it's called Overdrive. Yes, it is called Overdrive. And what's really cool about the cow print is that you don't have to be clean about it. It can be real messy. Cows are not perfect. So I don't want to hear anyone saying like, that's not a real cow print. Okay, I live on a farm and my cows don't look like that. I don't want to hear that today, please. Because I know some people will say that. It's crazy. <laughs> but you just want to be messy with it. And you can put as many blotches as you want. 
You can put more, you can put less, it's your preference. And whenever you're using the gel paints, you want to make sure you're not building up that product, meaning don't make it too thick because then once you look at it from the side, you're going to notice that it's a little lumpy, like it made it a little lumpy once you put your top coat and everything. So you want to make sure you keep it as very thin as possible, like the, the little paints, it's so, you know, hard to explain, but y'all get me, y'all get me. Now I'm making sure that I put little spots on every corner. I don't want the little sides to be too blank. I even added her like a little beauty mark or whatever. She's cute. Look at her. And I added a little big one right here. Just keep playing around with it until you're satisfied. You're like, wow, this is a cow right here. Is she cute? Once you're satisfied with the splotches or dots or whatever, you want to take your top coat. And today I used a matte one because I decided like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if it was matte? It would look really natural. So that's what I did. You can always use a glossy one. It's just all about preference and make sure it's a thin layer. And also you want to make sure that you get all the sides covered up because the gel paints are a little glossy so you want to make sure you cover that so that they don't show up you want to make sure everything's matte and this is what i do for every set i wipe off oh my god i wipe off these sides so that i can still have my nice crisp shape and then i pop it in the uv lamp and this is the final result it's so cute this is my first time doing a little cow print i really want to try the cheetah print next super excited Thank you again so much for watching, you guys. I appreciate all the support, and I'll see you in the next one.